Oh, hello and good afternoon. I welcome you to today's Trading Spotlight webinar here together with Atmere Markets. It's Friday, it's the 22nd of January 21. And uh, today we'll look at a very, very interesting topic. One topic which has been, uh, yeah, in the financial media, um, nearly up and down, let's say. Um, IPOs, so initial public offerings and... Um, there have been some some crazy crazy um, um, valuations, market capitalizations, being reached right on the first day of trading. Some of you probably have followed the action in Airbnb. Some of you have probably followed already the crazy IPO of Snow in um, that was in September, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, Snow has been very interesting. It's a, it's a, I can't say yes. It's a hot sector right now. Cloud service um, um, and and then computing in this context, um, and especially because um, someone who is usually usually known to be quite conservative when it comes to um, uh, um, um, investments in company companies um, in the um, not just cloud sector but in technology in the technology sector in general uh, Warren Buffett um, who is again very conservative here with this approach um, is said to have invested heavily in this IPO and so <clears throat> There have been some some crazy developments and many people wonder if this will continue probably in 21 in this year and um so well today what we want to do is we want to first of all shine a light on um what are ipos certainly so here's the agenda um so what are ipos in this context um and but then also point out why it's probably very attractive for um, um a traders in general active traders in this context also day traders certainly um why it's so attractive to trade ipo so there is some some very interesting characteristics um ipos share and you can uh really um, see them happening over and over again very clean technical levels you can trade up from and um, so in this context then certainly after um, um, going into more detail here we want to um, show a recent hot IPO I've picked snow I could certainly also have picked Airbnb for example um, and uh, then I want to also point out the current um, um, a boom there. Boom is the right word, I think. Yeah, it's party like it's 90, 99. Um, what I mean by that, we will see that in a few minutes then. And then I also want to point out certainly some potential hot IPOs in 21. And um, so here with Atma Markets, you certainly have a broker who is a, um, a multi asset broker in this case. So um, you can be sure that some of these potential hot IPOs, if they happen as expected, will also be a topic then um, at Admiral Markets as a broker and uh, will be followed closely from Admiral Markets being offered as a financial product you can then trade with. Uh, um, and, and you can prob probably use this knowledge here from this uh, webinar then in your trading um, um, when these IPOs finally happen. Uh, in regards to my person, uh, my name is Jens, so um, you're probably uh, not here for the first time, but um, the Trading Spotlight webinar series is now um, uh, going for quite a while. I think we're in the second year, one and a half years, something like that. And um, so uh, I'm uh, yeah, trading the financial markets for over 10 years. Um, it's, it's close that I can say um, I'm trading the financial markets for over than 20 years. In fact, I started out as a, as a bank employee, as a trainee with a the bank then, um, but uh, found out quite quickly that I want to be uh, in, the, uh, in the trading universe. And um, therefore, I found out, okay, I have to study something like mathematics, um, economics, so especially mathematics, it was uh, very it's got more and more quantitative let's say and i found out if i want to make my way on wall street then i have to probably study something uh with a with a quantitative um, um touch and mathematics came to my mind due to uh my um, mathematical uh um uh how can i say um interest overall and uh during my my years in school and uh, so yeah I, I studied mathematics still as a as a former um a trainee with a bank and having made some money there um i want to or i had to make a living and um i want to become independent from my parents and uh, back then my my girlfriend her father 
um, knew someone who was uh, working as a trader for a big stockbroker in my hometown. And so, well, um, I, I just used the chance here. I applied for a job, was picked right on the spot and learned trading from scratch, in fact, um, at a professional trading desk. And they are also, IPOs have been a topic. So um, I probably know some, some small things around um, IPOs here in this context. And uh, that's it around my person. So I gave an interview. I did an interview together with Admiral Markets that was um, already around one and a half year ago when we started this webinar series you will find if you watch this video now on youtube you'll find uh the um uh, in link to the to the uh interview I did back then. You find it um, in the description box of this of this video for further information around my person. Admiral Markets is uh, the brand, the, the company behind this webinar series, um, Trading Spotlight, um, a financial service provider now for nearly 20 years and with over 8,000 financial in, um, 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 instruments being offered and offices around the globe, over 20. In fact, highly regulated broker, FCA, SISEC, in this case also ICE, I, I, ASIC, not um, ASIC, I think, it's, it's the right um, 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 emphasis here. Um, it's the Australian regulatory body in this context. Very competitive offering. So here in Germany, for example, I'm located in Berlin in Germany, by the way. Um, here in Germany, we refer to Admiral as the so-called DAX expert. So um, due to the very competitive offering when it comes to DAX trading with a typical spread, um, or no, not just a typical spread. This is in case of um, FX pairs and due to uh, I'm having a variable spread, spread here. When it comes to the DAX, it's uh, 0.8 points um, and it's uh, fixed from uh, or during the main trading hours in this case. Um, and uh, this is by far and also um, in comparison to what you have to expect then in terms of um, 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 uh, what's the word for this? Um, uh, order execution, for example, order execution speed and, and, and all this. Um, this is something which you can really rely on. And uh, this is one of the reasons why Admiral is um, probably the first choice um, when it comes to DAX trading here in Germany. I think over the whole European continent, if I'm not mistaken. And um, so long things short, um, give AdmiralMarkets.com a visit, um, check out the website for further details. I think it's definitely worth your time. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Admiral directly. And um, yeah, so that's that's it on, on Admiral. Now we want to dig into today's topic and answer the question, what is an IPO? And um, how especially then to trade it finally. So first of all, an IPO uh, is um, in the long form, uh, it's initial public offering, which refers to the process of offering shares of a private corporation to the public. And um, that um, happens in a new stock issuance then, in fact. Um, there's also, by the way, another um, quite interesting thing which happens from time to time. You probably have heard about this and was also a clear sign um, that's, something like two, three months ago. I'm not really sure. Um, but there was um, also, that's called the second IPO. Uh, I'm not sure whether whether this is the right um, uh, um, wording for this. And um, we call this secondary offerings. And uh, that's interesting because this is when you uh, try to raise fresh capital here and uh, you offer then shares, um, usually at a discount in case of um, Tesla. Uh, that's why I mentioned this. Um, it's a quite hot stock in the electric vehicle sector. Um, Tesla did one secondary, so went public already several years ago, um, but then um, raised fresh capital, I think something like two, three months ago. And there was uh, such strong demand that usually you see once um, 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 a company issues more stocks and then floods the market, let's say, with it, usually you see a discount when it comes to the uh, price of the stock. And um, it was a, only a short drop um, when Tesla did this secondary in this case, and then it was um, aggressively bought back and the market really pushed to uh, not only new highs, but new all-time highs that day. It was crazy. And um, look at the follow-through. So something like two months ago, three months ago, I'm not sure, um, but you can see the um, a vertical rise in stock price. So that's that's a clear sign that there's, there's massive demand right now. Um, and also that secondaries can be quite hot, in fact, but we want to focus here on the first um, uh, um, initial public offering in this case. So the starting point of your career with, as a company at a stock exchange. And uh, once your um, stock is offered to the public then. And uh, what's, what's usually happening here uh, during this IPO is a public share issuance allows a company to raise capital from public investors. And uh, that 
is then nothing more than the transition from a private to a public company, which can be a really important time for private investors to fully realize gains from their investments, as it typically includes share premiums for current private investors. Um, that's very interesting. Uh, something probably which is of interest in this context. Um, so. I once worked for a company which went public, in fact, so in fact, the stockbroker. And uh, I was working there during the time once they um, um, went public. So what, what usually happens then is that you can buy stock or it's not just that you can buy them at a discount, the stock of your of your employer in this case, but also sometimes it's part of your um, uh, a remuneration package then, in fact, so that, uh, that, that a company not just pays you a salary, but in addition to that, you get stocks from the company at a um, very attractive price in this context. And uh, very attractive means in this case, so you get the stock at the discount um, and uh, you can then sell once or after the public um, uh, initial public offering is through the IPO is through, you can then sell it uh, to the to the public at yeah a quite interesting um, um, level and usually so in my case it was a, it was a um, um, snap with a finger and made 100 percent on my on my investment in this case and this is a usual uh, practice in this context um, which is also quite interesting it has especially to do once you look at companies um, which went public and then there's usually um, a window in which which employees are for, um, have no um, allowance to sell their their um, um, uh, shares, respectively. Especially, the board of directors has no um, um, allowance to sh sell the shares. This is something, especially if you have a hot sector and if the stock goes vertical um, here and the uh, market capitalization goes through the roof, that usually then um, there starts some kind of um, speculation that probably the company is overvalued, which is difficult to say. I mean, um, if you if you have a classic growth stock like Tesla, for example, everyone is talking about Tesla being overvalued and all that. The funny thing about this is you can't put a price um, ceiling here uh, or earnings ceiling in this case, um, um, in a growth title, in a classic growth stock, you, you just can't do that. You don't know um, how much money rather um, um, in, the, in the future this company will, will make. And this, that's why the uh, classic way to evaluate whether the company is um, priced at a, at a, yeah, let's say fair price or if the company is um, overvalued, it's, it's just not valid. It's uh, the, the classic theory behind this is just not uh, valid in this context. Still, again, so if you have this initial public offering, we focus today on the day, respectively, the, um, the day of the IPO, respectively, the day after, um, after the IPO. What, what still could happen is that once this window expires and there's now the allowance, especially if the um, um, stock went vertical after its IPO, that then there could be some heavier selling pressure resulting out of um, yeah, top management at least selling part of their stake in the company and their shares to the market then in this context. And um, in this context, then um, what we, um, yeah, what we, what we usually see is then in this case, uh, the, the, the private investors slash the employees are selling their shares. And um, what's also possible. So in fact, um, this is, this is, how to profit from an IPO if you're an insider in this case. Um, but it's not just uh, limited to that. But what we want to focus today on, since usually this is not the case, you are not um, part of, of or employee, former employee of, let's say, Snow, in our case today, or Airbnb. It's also a very interesting story, probably a side note here. Um, after the IPO from Airbnb in December, uh, which was also, um, uh, it was, they were not just tier one banks like Goldman Sachs, I think Morgan Stanley, who, um, 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 uh, what's in German, the word is begleiten. Uh, it's like you, you follow the IPO for the company. You take care of everything related to um, um, marketing material in this case. Uh, you you um, um, set the IPO price, the valuation of the company, roadshow and all that stuff. Um, so uh, once this IPO happened in December, shortly some some days before Christmas, um, I also tweeted out that Airbnb now finally uh, trades publicly, and um, there was one guy then coming out and 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 telling me that he has a friend who 
once worked for Airbnb in the early days, once the co company was quite small and was paid um, shares, which um, in this case, she never sh she never sold. So she still had the shares. And then after this, this massive run on the upside, something like 10 bag or something um, she made in easily on her um, on her on her um, 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 stock package in this case so this is definitely something um, you can and how you can profit from an IPO as an employee or former employee who was um, paid shares in this case um, meanwhile still this is something which is usually not the case so we especially as retail, tra retail traders we do not participate in an IPO that way but we have to participate in the offering here um, um, in a different way especially as active traders and this is exactly what we want to focus on today then so now the question why is it attractive to trade ipos and um, especially professional traders like to trade ipos for several reasons um, so in fact um, probably you have seen the short teaser before we started this um, event here um, um, yesterday uh, where i said there's traders out there making a living out of trading ipos and uh, that was um or that is definitely true so there's uh, trading strategies um or um, also syndicates as we will see um which form here around these ipos especially around hot IPOs and they make a living out of trading IPOs and um, based on the levels which the IPO delivers then in fact. So it's a discretionary um, um, a trading approach um, which nevertheless um, offers not um, um, or you not usually it's a difficult word in this context but um, from time to time let's say, uh, you really get quite easy trades uh, with clean technical analysis um, driven trades in this um, context. And uh, what do I mean with clean and clear technical levels you get? Well, there's no history in price. So when we look at a chart, let's say at the EURUSD, when we look at the DAX, for example, or when you look at a stock in this case, like Apple or Amazon or Google, whatever, you have a quite long uh, price history in this context. And you don't really know whether uh, the levels you're looking at here are um, significant or if these um, uh, levels are, are um, really probably something just a, a coincidence. So just um, they are there, but uh, just coincidentally being there. In case of an IPO, um, you only have the day of the IPO. You probably have another day of trading. And once you position yourself after the second day of trading, for example, um, you, you only have these two days and uh, the intraday levels, and you can quite easily spot whether a price, a certain price was accepted or not. There can, and as we will see, there will be reasons why a price is usually accepted and why, for example, um, a bit, for example, is hold at a certain price and why the stock bounces at a certain level. And you have the information once we drop that level that usually could create some further selling pressure happening. Um, and this is given by the simple fact that there's no price history. So you do not have any um, prices only for two days in this case. And based on that, you can then spot whether a certain level was accepted accepted or wasn't in, in this case. And um, based on that, you can usually also uh, formulate trades which offer from um, time to time, or quite often in fact, excellent um, excellent um, risk reward trades in this case. And uh, as I already pointed out, some professionals really focus only on IPO trades. Um, so as I already pointed out, some form syndicates, which means nothing more than a temporary alliance here of businesses that join together to manage a large transaction and to yeah, probably also to some extent trade the IPO, not just profitably, but in an, in an extent which can make, in fact, a year in, in, in terms of performance in this case. And um, so if the IPO is hot, and that has been the case um, now, especially over the course of last year. So there's, um, as, as we have usually in trading in business in general, there are waves, right? So there's sometimes um, a, um, a period once you have an IPO, but it's just not it's not hot. It's, it's like there's no buzz around, you can say. Um, but right now, we have exactly that window. And it's um, likely that this will continue in the um, months to come, especially with the outlook of getting more um, monetary stimulus here, especially from, uh, from the, from the um, Fed in this case, especially in the US in this context. Then. And it means also that um, you probably have a hot IPO around um, business 
areas where um, which, which usually profit from the current um, uh, COVID environment, let's call it. So everything which is stay at home, stay at home stocks, for example. So in this case, Zoom, for example, or Peloton, um, just to name two um, 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 stocks, for example, which obviously um, play a role. So we are using Zoom here in this context, for example, Peloton is this cycle um, thing you can you can buy and then you can uh, build your own gym from home. Um, we, we have um, um, then also several hot IPOs, I can already say there's, for example, um, a company, it's called Roblox. It's a gaming company, which will probably go public in 2021. They already plan to go public um, at the end of 2020. Um, they, they postponed their IPO. Not, not really sure why, probably to uh, not get um, hyped too much to see a pump in the stock price and then just a crash um, once, once, you, once you just yeah, reach the level of, of, of market capitalization, which is just not, just, which is not justified. It's also a broker, uh, especially in the U.S. In this case, who plans to go public? Probably, I've heard about Robinhood. We can we can name the broker because here we are um, in the in the European regulated um, environment, and so uh, this is this is not a, a direct competitor of of Admiral Markets in this context. It's only U.S. related. They also plan to go public. I see a hype. So every every a company which is currently um, uh, profiting from this pandemic environment, let's say a COVID nineteen environment, has the potential to be a hot IPO in this context, everything which is um, um, uh, uh, cloud computing related, as I already mentioned, Snow, the example we'll look at in the following minutes. So <clears throat> this is usually something where you can say, okay, there's some buzz around. This is, this is hot. And uh, it becomes especially interesting for professionals to trade these um, IPOs since uh, the levels then they, these professional traders can or will trade against here become even clearer. For example, um, um, a price above the initial um, uh, pricing range, we will, we will see what this is in the, in the example in the next slide. Um, it points to lots of demand and especially. So if, if there's a price range you, you look at and then you have an IPO price and it's not just that the IPO price is above that range, but in addition to that, there's no real let's call it flush or no real drop back into the pricing range, but the market can continuously trade above the pricing range. Well, that shows that there is high demand, not just from, from retail investors in this case, who can now finally participate in the IPO and trade the IPO, but also from institutionals, for example, who had no um, uh, um, shares um, or who got no shares in the um, um, pre-offering phase. So we, in Germany, we call this, we, we call this Zeichnen. It's like, um, um, yeah, drawing. I, mean, I don't know the, the English word for this. I'm, I'm, I'm just right now missing it. But, but drawing the stock. I, I hope you, you understand this. So you, you want to buy the stock. You, you call your broker and you tell them, okay, I want to participate in this IPO. That's one strategy. You can trade it. But therefore, you also need to have the access um, to a broker who then has the access to the stock um, who can buy for you some shares, a limited amount of shares, and and you can you can buy them before the yeah, um. um company goes public then and then hopefully profit from a uh, pricing which is well above the uh, pricing range within you um uh, got your got your uh, stock from your broker one question okay so i'm um, just i, I just want to go through the um uh, um, uh, um, um, th through the questions, let's just let me let me finish um, this this bullet point here. So that means that if you have the price above this pricing range, usually this is the first indication, at least, that there is strong demand, and um, that means that there's now interest and buying coming in from the sidelines, which is especially um, interesting once you have a hot IPO and you have all this liquidity being pumped into the market from from the Fed in this case and in, in the US. Then when we look at the US, for example, um, so now. Now, let, let me just go through the questions. So um, can we uh, buy IPO shares from Admiral Markets? Uh, you mean once Admiral goes public? I'm not even sure well, if, if there's a plan to go public for Admiral Markets. Probably you have to reach out to Admiral directly and ask. Um, what usually um, happens, it, it's uh, not uncommon. You you can see, for example, uh, so right now there's no hot, hot IPO, um, um, which is potentially... Um, seeing some really strong demand right now. Um, so that could 
easily happen in the uh, in the next months or so. But usually uh, you see then on the website from Upmare Markets um, pop-ups appearing. For example, um, you can now trade Airbnb. Um, there's also a news section that we you can usually see that then. By the way, let me just see um, whether I can. Let me just open a window here. Well, no window appeared. Here's the window. There we go. So, Admiral Markets. And so, this is the English world uh, website. This is the economic calendar now. We, we went through this. I'm already in another trading spotlight webinar. Um, I'm talking about about us here in this case, and then you can you can click on news, and uh, once there is a hot IPO, as for Airbnb, you usually have a um, window appearing there. So let me just let me just check. Probably, I mean, it was December. It's one month ago. So probably we have a good chance here to see um, how such a such a um, pop up or article news article. Um, that looks like, yes, by the way, um, um, so the question I, I, I just see here to buy um, uh, um, to buy the physical stock, we're talking about the physical stock now. So we are not only talk, or um, I'm, I'm talking about um, CFDs or stock CFDs in this case, we are talking about the physical stock. So this is also something which is of high interest. And especially when you look at a broker like Admiral Markets. So you have a multi-asset broker, which means you have the chance to trade sometimes right from the day of the opening uh, or from the IPO, a CFD on the stock. But um, as a as a multi, as a broker, usually here, get ready for today's Airbnb IPO. There we go. So you can see it here. Airbnb is launching their IPO, 10th of December um, 2020. And then you can trade physical stocks. You can you can trade it with your trading account. So Admiral Trade, um, you probably um, have seen here, there's um, the, the chance to open an account there and there's several account types. So if we open this window, you can see there's several types, MT4, MT5, but not just that, there's also an MT5 um, um, around Admiral Markets um, invest in this context. So there you can see it here is trade MT5. So this is the trading account. This is where you trade the CFD. And the invest account is the account where you can then buy the physical stock. So for example, in this case here, it's um, Airbnb, the market announcement and the launch of the, um, um, uh, how do I say that? Um, the launch of the uh, physical stock being offered on the New York Stock Exchange in this case. So if you go on, on, on products here and on shares, by the way, what you can also do is um, you can uh, check out whether a trade um, um, a stock is available. So for example, let me just um, check out here. These are the top shares. So this is a top share CVs, Apple, Google, Facebook, BNB Paribas, and BMW, German car maker. Um, and if you click on show all shares, you can check out here the symbol whether um, the stock is tradable or not. Airbnb is ABNB. And what you can see here is, for example, that you can only trade the physical stock. So um, if you want to trade um, 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 the CFD on the stock here, it's not possible. Therefore, you need a hashtag before that. So probably rather sooner or later, there will be an offering of the um, um, stock CFD. But here you can see that we are talking really about the physical stock. So uh, just to, to um, show what I am talking about, if I go for Google, for example, you can see we have here Alphabet in this case, physical stock. And the hashtag before that is the CFD on Google. So you can trade leverage then. So physical stock trading is one to one, no leverage. If you trade here the stock, you have a leverage of one to four, one to five, I think some, somewhere in this range. So I think it depends a little on the stock, um, but I think one to five is the um, uh, default leverage we are talking about. So this is just um, for informational um, and purposes in this case. I, hope, I just hope that, that this answers the question. Um, and uh, by the way, the, the links are also shared in the, in the chat box now. We will also share it here um, after the, the uh, webinar. Um, for those watching this now on YouTube in the uh, description box. So let me just um, here make sure that I that I know which IPOs, uh, which IPOs to share, no, which, um, uh, which, which links to share. And um, so then 
again, here, the tier one institutions, which underwrite such hot offerings. I think underwriting is, is the uh, right word. Oh, no, no, I, we were talking about drawing drawing right to to get the shared and being delivered however so often tier one institutions what is a tier one institution here we are talking about the big investment banks the big investment banking powerhouses usually um talk about and you listen to in the media jp morgan goldman sachs morgan stanley these are the tier one institutions and it's very important this is interesting from a physical, um, um, psychological standpoint here by the way something you you um, um, shouldn't um, underestimate in this context um, because these tier one banks uh they are tier one which means um they are seen from 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 the street, respectively, from, from competitors, from other companies watching this IPO. And um, in this context, then, if we if you look at tier one institutions, this makes also clear that some levels are of high interest during the IPO. And once the price then, um, or the IPO is not as hot anymore, let's say, or the IPO is through, and we have two, three days um, I'm here seeing the stock trading and people shifting, traders shifting their focus now on other stocks they're focused on, on markets, whatever, that this demand, which was usually um, uh, directed into the stock to keep it um, above a certain price level, for example, and not to be, let's call it, embarrassed in front of the company you just um, underwrite the IPO for, as to one bank in this case, and you got a lot of money for, um, that this usually then could help the uh, demand to diminish to a level where supply um, 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 is, is capable of initiating sometimes a quite sharp drop and, and correcting some of the potential high evaluations or um, high market caps you just reached through the um, IPO. And so let's come back to the uh, uh, tier one banks in this case, so uh, or tier one institutions. So they help the um, offered stock then to trade above the IPO price. This is usually something you can see. So let's say we have, for example, a range, um, which is something like 18 to 20. Um, and then you price the deal at, let's say, $25, for example. So um, then you usually see that the institution here who underwrites the offering for um, the company wants to make sure that the trade um, or no, the, um, um, that the stock trades above 25, above the IPO price at the day of the IPO, at least. And uh, as I already mentioned, this is um, to make sure that you avoid of getting embarrassed here in front of people. Um, you, we underwrite the IPO for us. So we is in this case tier one. So they make um, clear there's lots of demand to make sure that we do not drop this price, this third price level. And um, so this is a very interesting from a psychological standpoint, also something to take into account. Seems silly to some extent, but it's something to take into account. And we as retail traders um, who are, let's say, flying under the radar in this context can profit from if we take this into account. And you can really um, um, see this happening quite often that these levels are, um, uh, um, um, are, are defended, let's say. There's only one problem right now, and that's one of the reasons why um, I can't really show you um, a recent example in this context. What we have seen is that the opening price, for example, for the last recent hot IPO in snow was something like they had a they had a um, 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 target range of something like 100 to 110 USD, um, something you will see here. So this is a screenshot from the, um, um, uh, in this case, it's a daily chart, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and... Um, so what you what you again could see, I'm not really sure. This is a little unfortunate to be honest. So I don't like this anymore. <laughs> I don't like this because it doesn't make really clear. Um, it doesn't really make clear uh, um, um, what I want to show you. Let me just see. I, I just wanna I, I just wanna wanna um, have a look here at another IPO. Probably look at the Airbnb. I just found out that it probably I forgot to update the chart, which doesn't make sense now because now we can go through through um, um, uh, the text here, but this is not really um, showing what I want to want to show you, and and so that you can profit from from this um, a presentation. Um, especially for the future. Let me just see. So that's probably not an upmarket market chart. It's a trading view chart you will just see. But I think it's, it's uh, in this context, nicer. And we can, we can work with this a little better. Um, the only problem you will have is it's a German text I have here. But um, let me just see. I, I just, I just want to make sure. 
because this is, I think this is important. I'm sorry, this is, this is really, this is not, um, I hope it's not too unprofessional, but um, however, and so let, let's just go through this here. And um, uh, let me just see whether, whether I can then give you a recent example with Airbnb and the IPO. Um, so the thing is that you can see Snow going public on the uh, 20, um, the 16th of September, offering 20 million shares. Uh, yeah, yes, okay, it's German, but I can, I can translate it, no problem. So you can see then uh, they offer 20 million shares at $120 a share. Um, and the target range of the IPO was here, um, 100 to 110. And um, first indications here at around 10 a.m. Eastern time um, show that the price was um, already at 160. Okay, so way above, 60% above the target range here. And then the price finally after the stock opened was um, at 245 more than twice as high. And looking at here, the PA, uh, the price action of the IPO, that shows that we traded only max 10 minutes below 245 and closed around 252. So this is a first way, um, but in a really theoretical way, and I don't think that makes sense here in this context, that this price was um, aggressively defended. I haven't checked, by the way, Snow, but I think um, the, the, the stock most recently pushed above 300, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so that was um, still defended, even though there might be have there have been probably some some pricing uh, or some price action which dropped um, um, the price then below 245 in this context. But again, let me just um, here use it again. It's a German chart, but probably something uh, which which uh, underlines my thoughts a little better. So again, so this is Airbnb now. Um, here you can see this is the German um, um, text, but I, I will just guide you through this. It's the same same idea behind that to illustrate this concept. So Airbnb had its IPO on the 10th of um, December in this context. So this is um, a pricing on a five minute chart. Then here you can see it. And uh, so what you have is um, here this 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 range. Um, they the target range they were they were looking at between 56 and 60. They already had to increase that during their roadshow that they um, 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 saw so much demand for the stock and the, the IPO that they um, um, hired, is it the right word? So they, they um, upped the uh, target range here um, to 56 to 60. And they had a, a planned IPO price um, at 68. So um, above the, the, the range, because they, they um, expect the demand to be strong, but still they, um, um, they were in a range. Then the first price was at 164, uh, 46 in this case. And there you can see there was this strong push higher, this pop into the open. And then the very interesting thing now is the price action, which happened after. So you can see here that after this pop into the open, and by the way, uh, they, they started trading um, something like two three hours after um, the, the um, Wall Street bell rang at, um, in our case, uh, uh, 3.30 German time, so 9.30 Eastern time, AM Eastern time, 3.30 PM. And uh, you saw the pop into the open. And, and by the way, why do they do that? They want to avoid uh, such an embarrassment as they had during the uh, Facebook IPO. That was in 2012. There was some technical issues at NASDAQ back then. And um, so to avoid this and getting that embarrassed again after this powerhouse, I mean, Facebook, Okay, um, went public and they had these technical issues. They want to avoid um, under any circumstances to getting embarrassed that way again. And so that's the explanation why they sometimes take a little more time to make sure that everything runs as perfectly and smoothly as possible um, during especially such a big IPO where everyone, hot IPO where everyone is looking from the street, um, uh, what's what's happening here. So you see the pop into the open, now come to the price section. And then we are sold and you can see here, um, right here, you can't really do something about this as a trader. What we wanna do is we wanna collect information we can then use off uh, or use for a trade in the upcoming days. And um, so here, this is where, where trading, where trading um, 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 resumes in this case, or uh, where, where the trading day ends. It's, it's slightly below the IPO price at 146. But still, as you can see, there was some, some willingness, obviously, to defend 142. That was the first reaction. And this is how I interpret this. And then you can see it here. Um, the next day, that was the Friday. So we went public on a Thursday. Um, then we had the 11th of December. There was again um, some, yeah, it wasn't really 
big price action, what you could certainly see is that there was another drop towards this region around 142. And it was again, since many market participants potentially also looked still at this fresh IPO um, um, company in this case, there was still demand holding the price of the stock above that. And then into the last minutes of trading here, there was this, this, this flush on the downside um, after a quite yeah clear consolidation, so that was really um, there was no real taking, trading taking place, and there was more and more, especially given the high market capitalization, there was potentially more and more pressure, selling pressure, building, and this consolidation here, especially below this this blue line, that's the VWAP in this case, the volume weighted average price, that was probably a sign that there's um, rather sooner than later a push on the downside to be expected. And this is exactly what happened here. So that was a quite aggressive move. We are, we're going down here from something like 148, 150 to as low as 136 in minutes. And then we still close the day okay, but below this price here, 142. And now we have all the information. We have the IPO. We know there was, a, there was strong demand against 142 in this case, 144 probably. Probably the next day, Friday, you again saw um, in the afternoon, at least here, some, some uh, demand against this level. We broke this level. We had trouble to recapture that level into the close. And once the trading, um, uh, once trading resumed on Monday, and once we started the trading week, given the, the also gap down we had that, that day, we opened here, um, we could clearly spot a clear short okay that's probably a little difficult to say but we definitely had some information that now there is there might be some some clear and stronger push on the downside again at least for a short trade you could initiate something like an opening drive probably you can play here um with again here opening on the post ipo date it was in fact the second day of the ipo um under 140 and so airbnb gets intraday interesting for short place in this case and this is how you how you can really attack a, um, a freshly ipo'd um, company given the recent price action in this context and then um yeah how how to use then this this information in your in your trading in this case and you can see this you can spot this pattern quite often um these level to be expected and accepted it quite open um, um, um quite clearly again we don't have it here as clearly as i had it now in the um, um, um other chart and five minute chart but here when looking at um a snow for example you had a push of 10 minutes below 245 and then we were again aggressively bought up again to make sure most likely that the uh, tier one bank which underwrite the ipo for snow in this context is not getting embarrassed of of the street then and what we have here now is a party like it's 1999. So certainly Snow debuted in a currently very hot sector, cloud software, as I already pointed out. Um, and uh, it certainly profits right now. And also as uh, any other company, which is currently in this um, um, stay at home universe, let's call it, uh, it profits from the COVID-19 pandemic. And um, and what you what you can see is that still soaring over 112 percent, um, pushing the market capitalization of um, in this case Snow. Let's come back to Snow back from back um, from Airbnb. We, we saw a market cap of the company of over 70 billion, and that was in fact the largest valuation of a company to double its price in a market debut ever. So that happened never again. Even Airbnb was quite. Yeah, heavy or uh, let's say crazy. We've seen there still well, the IPO of, of Snow was just crazy. And uh, that was based on data um, um, uh, stretching back to, to uh, 1995, in fact. So times even before the um, dot-com bubble back then and now pointing to another potential bubble, at least in my opinion. And this is what you can see here. So there's an ETF, for example, who focuses on um, um, IPOs and, and is trading IPOs for clients. And you can invest in, a, in an ETF, you can, you can buy an ETF, which tries to profit from the recent um, a search in, in interest in IPOs. And you can see here the price um, um, went, went vertical too, especially in the second half of 2020. And it's likely that this will continue. So to put it differently, 
IPOs are very interesting from a short-term trading perspective, but mid to longer term, investors should be really careful in terms of longer engagements in companies like Snow, in companies like Airbnb, um, especially with the very uncertain economic outlook around the COVID-19 pandemic and how things develop here. In fact, the chart, by the way, is um, from uh, Mr. Baroud in this case. So if you're on Twitter, follow him. He is definitely a very, very good analyst, I think, and it's um, among the, the most quoted, I think, from Bloomberg, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and this is where, where I have the chart from, just to, to illustrate this a little better, this, this um, um, valuation craziness happening here. So interesting for us as day traders, as active traders, longer term investors should be quite careful given this, this, this crazy um, um, valuation, is, uh, valuation. You, can, you can see then. And uh, so finally, as I already promised, we want to have a look here at potential hot IPOs in 20. 21. And um, I already um, uh, um, mentioned several. We have another one here. It's a food delivery company um, called Instacart. Um, this came to um, my attention due to the fact that here, probably have seen that and in Germany, we had this um, uh, big um, scandal around Wirecard and uh, Wirecard, which was a, a DAX company, in fact. So being listed in the DAX, the German index being kicked out of the DAX and was replaced by food delivery, um, a company which, interesting enough, has never made any money uh, back into 2011, I think, has a market cap of way over 20 billion. Um, and um, however, you can, you can, uh, we, we don't want to want to judge that or something like that, but it probably also shows some, some, some craziness around, around uh, the current valuation levels of companies here and food delivery company, Instacart also potential uh, pandemic COVID-19 um, 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 uh, um, what's the word for this? Uh, profit here, pro prof profiting from, from this from this pandemic. We have a clothing uh, marketplace, Poshmark, um, short. This did, might be the um, uh, the symbol then, Posh. Um, and uh, especially here, this is something which is of interest for us as traders, as it points out to the retail trading um, um, industry and Robin Hood probably will likely go public in uh, um, uh, 21. That's at least something which is currently played you know, on the street, but also among uh, retail brokers. And once you talk to um, um, people in this industry, we have also another software company. It's UiPath, um, a potential highest and uh, one of the hotter IPOs, um, which postponed the IPO was Roblox here. So RBLX. Um, this is also, if you click here on Oh, let me just see where I did the link open. Did it just, oh, I'm not sure. So let me just see um, whether I can, no, it's not possible. Okay, doesn't matter. Um, so there's also um, um, a short piece you can read on, on NASDAQ and there's another lending company, a firm holdings, it's AFRM. I think especially Roblox is a gaming company um, and this industry also profiting massively from the current uh, lockdown stay at home approach is probably one of the hotter candidates for uh, 20, um, uh, um, 21 in this case. And here, these are the potential hot IPOs. Follow uh, the news section on the website from Atmar Markets to get an infos here on, uh, on, on on potential hot IPOs. I've just shown you Airbnb was um, announced there and uh, just feel free to reach out to, to Atmar for further information on that topic. Um, so let's come up, uh, come up with a summary here. So an initial public offering is... Um, the uh, process of offering shares of a private corporation to the public in a new stock issuance and professionals like to trade IPOs of because of several reasons. They very often offer easy trades, easy in quotation marks, but um, what easy refers to is the clean technical levels um, um, and also sometimes the psychological aspects, as I already pointed out with tier one banks in this case. They offer excellent risk reward trades and while they're currently especially interesting for the short-term trader, recent developments in the IPO sector point to potential bubble forming here, resulting in diminishing uh, risk reward investments for longer-term investors, something you have to take into account. So even if some, some a company like Snow with an investor like Warren Buffett um, sees a current run higher and is it's probably running a little too hot right now and something which you should take into account, especially from a risk reward perspective. And uh, so there, there we have it. So um, on Monday, the next webinar will take place here within this trading spot, a webinar series. So um, we have uh, the US presidential inauguration here. And uh, Paul will go through you uh, through the question, um, 
um, what will happen now. So after the new president uh, was inaugurated on the 21st, so yesterday, in fact, um, how will it potentially affect the markets? Initially, on the day, um, we've seen that uh, here there was a massive run probably also given the fact that Netflix uh, posted quite strong earnings for Q4 2020 and is a fangman or part of the fangman um, 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 cartel in this case and uh, just went crazy, pushed to new all-time highs. But still, um, probably we are about to start a new bull market or a new bull face here in this current um, environment. And uh, certainly, Paul will go through you with you through the details on how to turn this into an opportunity. So 2 p.m. London. Um, 25th of January, you will get more infos around this topic. Check your inbox for the webinar link if you're here live in the webinar right now. If you watch this on YouTube, Please leave a thumb up here. Please leave a comment if you're um, 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 if, if you're if you're excited about um, uh, recent developments in the market or what you wanna want to gonna get some input on. Feel free to to share your thoughts here. Reach out to us and uh, yeah, just comment below the video. And um, if you want to register for the webinar check out abnormalmarkets.com, the website, go to the top education and there on the webinars, you can register for free for the Trading Spotlight webinar series. Here are the contact details and here's the risk disclaimer. And uh, that's it for mine. So all the best. I wish you happy trading. Watch your stops. Talk to you again next week. I look forward to it. Check out Paul webinar, Paul webinars, please. And uh, also feel free to, to check our Trading Spotlight webinar, uh, Trading Spotlight um, traders yard community with all your questions in a forum format um, also if you want to have the link check out the description box below the video and that's it for my end so all the best see you soon